Yes, this is uh, Brett Secret Service. Uh, would you bring this phone back, please? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm going to go to another line. All right. Hey, you back? around. 
on and put her into these bastards. Hell, they, they just eat us alive. And Garment sees that, doesn't he? Absolutely. In fact, if, and he came to this conclusion entirely by himself, and as you can imagine, against his first instinct. No. Well, and I would, uh, when you're talking to Marta's staff, because I won't see them, I would take a line where, where you're concerned. Why don't you appear to be a little dovish? I mean, just say, gee whiz, you know, I... I don't know what he's going to do. I mean, he's he's done what he's done and did before. He's thinking about it himself. He's going to make his own decision, and I can't predict at all what he's going to do. Absolutely. I just keep him guessing, and I and if they wail and run around, say, "Now look, you can wail all you want, but that's he's the guy that's going to do this," and and that I've considered all their views, uh, all the rest. I mean, Schultz and Ehrlichman and you know uh, McGregor and and the Rumsfeld and Finch and all the rest, they don't know a goddamn thing about this. They exactly. don't know what it's about. And they don't know what we'll be hit with if this whole thing comes to pass. They don't, they don't know anything about foreign policy. Exactly. They're only concerned about, uh, frankly, peace at any price, really. Because they see what well, all they're concerned about is, well, revenue sharing and the environment and all that crap, which doesn't amount to anything, in my opinion. They want to take off the immediate pressure. This is their overriding mm -hmm. concern. Mm-hmm. Well, the immediate pressure isn't all that heavy. And that, I don't believe, can be done. Yeah. I mean, it can't be done their way, because once you accept the premises of McGovern, you are fighting on his ground, and it wouldn't be in character. Oh, that's right. There is one thing, Mr. President, there are two sentences we ought to add. Yeah. Uh, because there's the cynical comment that the dogs are now making, especially McGovern, that we are substituting America, Asian for Americans yeah. casually and increasing the bombing, and we can do it in two senses. One, where you speak about reduction in American debt, yeah. you can say, and South Vietnamese casualties have also dropped by, I think, 50%. I'll get you the exact right. Rate. And why don't we say that our, and then put in, and we've reduced our bombing by so much. And the bombing within South Vietnam has been reduced yeah. by 90%, Mr. President. Yeah, and just, well, rather than getting into too many figures, you say that the that we've, been, we've reduced our bombing by 30% or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just get it, whatever the figure is for Southeast Asia. So I don't have to get into separating South Vietnam from well, Laos. The significance of the 90% is that in the populated areas, our bombing has decreased by 90%. The area we are now bombing is the unpopulated mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. I, I know that, but I don't have time to explain that. I'll, I'll, I'll get you that. All we need is just get some figure that makes the point we've, that is, we've, we've, we've uh, uh, we, well, we, we, we can at least try to, try to get that across. Right. But, uh, so two sentences is what I would recommend them. But, but. And, right. and also the South Vietnamese casualties. Right? That South Vietnamese casualties, I'm getting the exact... Even with Laos? Even with Laos. Yeah. You even say that. Even with the heavy casualties they took in Laos. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course, these goddamn dove things, Henry. It's, it's just one thing. They eat you alive. They take one thing and then they go after another one. And, uh, hell... I've, uh, I've determined to just see it through and hell with them. And, it's, yeah, it's, and if, they, uh, if it fails, it fails. And Well, it's a heroic posture, Mr. Well, you know, who we are not, the point is that there's no other course for the country. Yeah. The, uh, these people, I mean, um, that's why the uh, why our, our domestic side, I mean, while I'm interested in their views, why they're irrelevant. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's right. I mean, now, on the other hand, too, I must say that they are they are so terribly obsessed with re listening to television, reading all of our critics, the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post, and of course I must say the Alsop piece probably disturbs them. But they read all that and 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 they say, well, now just a minute, is this true? I mean, are have we have we overstayed anything? Haven't we really kept our promises? You see, that's the point. That I, I constantly get back to the fact that I don't think our own people know that enough how to defend us. That's right. That's well, right. Hmm? They are astonished by some of these things, or by what we've accomplished. I mean, we've kept our promises. We will have taken out several uh, several hundred thousand, two thirds of our. No, but they get the impression. Or they read the they read the critics, and they get the impression that damn it, we are lying, and that we are covering up. That there are.
Yeah. Yeah. He's nice. Just the rule that he probably has not. Secretary Harden, please. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Secretary Harden. Hi, Glenn. Yes, Mr. President. I uh, just made a decision that I think will uh, please you. Good. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, and as a result of it, I uh, uh, know that you can now go out and, uh, and have a chance to sell our uh, rural uh, sharing uh, The extension service. Yes. We, uh, we've, uh, I made the decision that uh, we will uh, follow your recommendation. The, uh, uh, the maintenance of equity, you know, uh, sort of whatever it is that is required to, uh, I think, think you, think you know what the, what the, uh, what yeah, the, three, the three, yeah, that need to go in. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry, yeah, I had to push the harvest. Well, I, I understand, I understand. Well, I, as a matter of fact, John Connolly and I talked a little about it in California, and, cause you know how strong he was about this and that and the other thing, and I just, I just told him, I said, no, the Department of Agriculture will be tough enough, but the Extension Service, we just cannot, cannot, uh, you know, that damn thing is, uh, so part of the American uh, ethic that uh, we just can't uh, screw it up. Well, so, uh, so we. But I just want you to know that I, uh, I just told Ehrlichman and Schultz that's the way it's to be. So it's done. Well, thank you. And uh, when you hear it from them, I just hope you carry it out. But uh, I, pre- I appreciate it. I know you had to argue for it, and and uh, you were right, and uh, we pushed it out. Well, on that basis, and, and you get the and, and you get the oh good, and you get the word to the other to the people in the department that you and I chatted about the thing, and that I. Frankly, Pat, this is a good idea too to the farmers that I overrule the OBM staff and I stood to the Secretary of Agriculture. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Say, uh, Mr. Okay. President, there's a man I think you know it here with me now. Uh huh. Bob Gifford of the Farm Journal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. if we don't, uh, one or the other of us stutter in the next 10 minutes, he's going to come to work with us. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. But uh, don't, listen, you don't stutter ever. Uh, I try not to. That's right, that's right. You're always fast with the words. Well, he's good to be here. Well, he's a great, great guy. I just told him I'm just delighted, and we're, 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 we'll be delighted to have him. You would say a word to him, would you? Sure I would. Sure I would. Put him right on. <laughs> I didn't raise this either, bud. <laughs> that's right. Hello. Hello. I just wanted you to know that uh, Cliff had told me that he's trying to uh, use his wiles to get you to come help us, and I'm, I couldn't endorse it more. It'd be a, be a wonderful asset to the administration to have you with us. We need we need not only your uh, your uh, your support, but more your your know how. Your your uh, your you know your way around. You know the farm community, and it would just be a great help to us. Well, I appreciate that very much, and uh, we'll uh, we do we we look forward to working with you. I just gave Cliff some good news. He'll tell you about about the extension service, so we'll, that'll make your job a little easier. <laughs> all right. All right. But, okay. All right. So tell, the, tell the farmers not to give up on us. We're, it's going to come out all right. I, I'm sure yeah. it will. Yeah. I'm sure it will. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Mr. President. You betcha. You betcha. Bye. Well, this is a great day, Mr. President. Fine. You, uh, you, you, go, you go ahead now. And uh, the thing, just you work out the words, but uh, I've made the general ruling. I just, I didn't read the, you know, I don't know how to adopt the idea. I just said, all right, fellas, look, we're going to, I'll do what you want on this thing, so let's work it out. Well, if they're all, the words are all prepared. All right. Bye. 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 Mr. Alderman, thank you. Uh, Mr. Alderman, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. That was great. Well, I don't know. As I said, it's a, it's a, it was 19 minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> but it was a lot of work. But I, it was 1937, actually. You cut it by three seconds. <laughs> now, I must say that I put an awful lot of emotion into it. Well, and, and, and it, I don't know whether it got through. It sure did. And it, it did very clearly. And it, it, uh, the, Decision to do the thing at the end was exactly right, I think, because it, it, for the, for one thing, it completely threw the, the, uh, commentators off. Oh, did it? Because it was, you know, they didn't have it. They already they chopped it up. Well, they didn't have it in their text. No, they're not chopping it up. Both ABC and NBC, uh, did just a very quick wrap up and then went off the air. CBS is still on analyzing.
surprising. Yeah, well, they hope. But they're not, uh, you know, they're, they're, it threw them off because so far they are covering it very fairly, but uh, rather came on right at the beginning and made quite a point of the, that the last two minutes was not in the text. And, uh, you know, that you had, uh, that they had been briefed on uh, the early part of it. Yeah. I just got a uh, note here from uh, the, on Billy Graham's call. He says, this was a masterful job, particularly the last two or three minutes were very good. He felt the president spoke to the heart as well as to the head. As an appeal, it was one of the best and generally one of the best presentations that he's given. So Billy liked that part. And uh, I, the, of course, the staff people are all just thinks it, think it's great. The last part, of course, was... Uh, was a quite a work of art, to be frank with you. It sure was to take all of that and to put it, compress it into that, and to say it without being maudlin, and yet to have some emotion in it. You know, it was done with with style. It sure was, and uh, nobody can say that we were tear jerking and all that sort of thing. And but it jerked a tear too, I think. Well, that's Brody uh, Black of the Cincinnati Inquirer's one of guy in here that uh, says the conclusion was impressive and moving. And, you know, I think we're going to get that on all of these, that, that mm -hmm. he thought the strong point of the speech was your willingness to be judged on the record. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that, I think, well, you can call me back in a half hour and it comes through awfully strong. Any reactions you get? Okay, okay, okay sure. Me a half hour and a half hour. I'll be eating and then I, I just want to, but I don't want to talk to anybody myself. Okay. But uh, I'm going to be particularly interested to know who does call. <laughs> All right, and let me tell you one that Bill Rogers called before the, the thing and uh, said if I saw you before you went on to tell you he had read the speech and that it was right on the ball and as the kids would say it was right on. Yeah. He, he was very enthusiastic. Okay. Fine. Okay. Good time. And Elliot, you'll always remember your page. Uh, I eat you, sir. Kissinger, please. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Kissinger. Yeah. The president. Yeah, hi, Henry. This was the best speech you've delivered since you've been in office. I don't. Well, I don't know. I think no, November third was better, but uh, no, but no, we will no. never have a moment. We'll never have a moment like that again. Well, the November third speech was not well delivered, Mr. President. If yeah. you remember, yeah. it was a powerful speech. Yeah, this one was really movingly delivered. Uh, and I don't know whether you saw the commentary. Of course, I don't look at the commentary. Well, I, don't care what, I don't care what the bastards say. Well, but this is so amazing. John, first of all, no one was fly specking it. John Chancellor was very favorable. Uh, everyone is saying a strong man sticking to his guns, uh, carrying out his policy, not being driven off. Dan Rather, very positive. Marvin Cow, very positive. The only guy who was fly specking it a little bit is the, is the Pentagon correspondent mm. who had been... How about Howard Smith? How would he do? Uh, he would not. Or at least I didn't see him. Yeah. I'll say one thing. This was a... This little speech was a work of art. I mean, I, I know a little something about speech writing, and by the time we got it done and that little conclusion, that I think that was done. Uh, there isn't... A, it isn't because, and it was no act, because no actor could do it. No, no actor in Hollywood could have done that that well. I thought that was done well, didn't you think? Well, first of all, no actor could have written it. To begin yeah. with, you couldn't have done it unless you had meant it. Yeah. But did that come across? I mean, it was... It was the president. I had, after all, heard it before. Yeah. I had, not, I had a lump in my throat yeah. when I heard it. Well, you know, it brought a lump to mine, <laughs> strangely enough. It, I always did. When I saw the little kid, I almost broke up, you know, in the room that day, and I'll never forget. I little... watched it with Hague and Lewis yeah. and they... What did, what did they think? Absolutely moved. And overwhelmed, they said this was tremendous. Haig, uh, Lord too. The Lord too, and then he's sort of an intellectual. But Haig, Haig would. But of course, Haig. Did Haig, Haig liked our defense of the armed forces yeah. too, didn't he? I really stuck it to him on that. Very much, and the, and the TV guys who actually had treated me rather roughly in the question period, yeah, they... but gave back exactly what we gave them. Mm -hmm. uh, these TV briefings pay off, but above all, you imposed on them. A measure, a great deal of respect. This, uh, I don't know what others will tell you, but this was the most favorable commentary I've heard, the most respectful one. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And it was. But you thought, how, how did it come off in delivery? I uh, didn't look delivery, up much. It was there. by far the best delivery I've heard you give. It was dignified, strong. It was not uh, ingratiating. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah. If anything can do it, I don't know what the results will be. No, well, we won't do it. Yeah. But if it could yeah. be, when I met with the, those leaders, were a miserable lot, weren't they? Well, that you. Well, Alfred is all right, but Scott didn't. But I meant Scott. Ford's fine, but that goddamn Scott was and Griffin, you know, sucking around. Well, uh, well Scott. Yeah. Anything you tell Scott, yeah. you might as but, well tell the New York. No, uh, but I was. Uh, but I. Uh, st- but but I. After you left, I stuck it to him. I said, look, if, you know, on that point, I said the Congress wants to take over. That's fine, but then they take the responsibility for this going down the drain, and that is clear, gentlemen. By God, I, I'm not going to let them get it off of this hook. Well, it is a disgrace, Mr. President. Yeah. You are saving this country. It is... Uh, well, it incidentally, let me say, uh, screw the cabinet and the rest, though. As far as I'm concerned, I've made the speech now, and the rest of them, if they like it, fine, but no more sucking around. From now on, they come to me. Well, I'm, just, I'm sick of the whole bunch. The speech that we, that you can, that we can all be proud to have had the privilege to be associated with. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. It is. It was also magnificently delivered. It was the best delivery. Uh, the thing at the last was a good idea, wasn't it? The to, to, to throw away the text and uh, it, and also the way you put it away was very effective. I mean, but the, move the papers away. Move the papers away. Take a little time. John Chandler uh, said you gave the whole speech without notes. Ah, yeah. The end. Oh, that's right. Oh, I had no notes at the end. No, no. Uh, oh. He com- commented yeah. at the end of the... Yeah, I see. But he, he gave an absolutely favorable summary of it. Mm-hmm. And as I said, rather, and... They're probably afraid egg no jump on him. And, uh, <laughs> well, no, this speech yeah. was hard to fly spec. Well, it's a goddamn good little speech, actually. Well, deep down, they all know you're right. That's, that's the it. elephant. And they know the other people are just... Yeah, that's right. They know they and the know. others are a bunch of goddamn cowards. Yeah, and and they know... Cowards and publicity seekers. That's right. And there isn't... Well, I'll tell you this, though, Henry. Uh, you've, uh, you've convinced me, the staff, except for Haldeman and one Haldeman or two others. Ehrlichman has been. Right. Haldeman Ehrlichman. Well, Schultz is fine, but, but he's in another league. Yeah. But, 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 but the staff generally... Screw them, and uh, I mean they can do their jobs, but uh, no more, nothing more. And as far as the cabinet, except for Conley, the hell with them. I mean uh, that's all there's to it. Well, Mr. President, you've done this one. Yeah. And if it does, if it doesn't work, I don't care. I mean, well, well, I, right now, if it doesn't work, then let me say though, I'm going to find out soon, and then I'm going to turn right so goddamn hard it'll make your head swim. We'll bomb those bastards right out of the off the earth. I really mean it. Well, I, I, then I think you agree, don't you? I think, Mr. President, we have to make fundamental decisions. That's right. Next, in the next uh, That's right. few weeks, mm-hmm. seeing what the president brings back. That's right. Well, yes. And well, but I mean, assuming he doesn't bring anything back, assuming they don't negotiate, do the then we turn right hard, Henry. I think that's right. And let's teach him. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good night. Mr. Yes, please. Woods, please. Thank you, sir.
sit him in that hair. The vice president called. He would like to talk with you. And he, 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 he Peter Malatesta talked with me and said that the vice president thought it was, they all thought it was just marvelous, but that he, you know, he really would like to talk with you. So I'll give the operator that number if you want. Well, maybe I should return his Rogers was at the Luxembourg uh, Embassy. So he didn't see it? Huh? Yes, he did. He called and he said it was great, it was tremendous. Uh, he said everyone thought it was. And he said that he thought it had, quote, the same impact as the fun speech. That it had one hell of an impact. And that he just, he just thought the last part was Well, he suggested that, you know. He didn't, no, he didn't suggest what I'd say, but no. he said, throw away your notes and just talk a little right. while. Well, he was just, he was. But this little story about place. Kevin I've told, I never told before. But, no, that was beautiful. But, uh, that little but, Kevin you know, said. the little boy saluting. Wasn't yeah. that something? It was beautiful. And the attorney general called. Oh, did he? Yeah. What did he thought say? it was great. He thought it was one of, of your very best. One of your great... That's nice. He said, I thought it was one of his greatest performances personally. And he said that he'd been working, talking with people, very hard problem, but he thinks that, that uh, you have really, you know, touched the people. And and he thinks that, you know, we just have to move ahead with the project of selling some of the idiots. Well, there are most of them in... Uh the establishment, yeah. Well, I'm glad Rogers was uh, pleased. Oh, yeah. and the vice very president. much so. Yeah. Very much so. Where is, and, is, is, is Agnew out in California? Uh, I yeah, Agnew, I'll, I'll give the operator the number. Is there? Well, maybe not. I don't think I should call him out. I think you should. Well, he called me, did he? Yes. Well, then I should return. He now. said, he called and said, I would like to talk and, to him. Uh, all right, fine. That you came, you, know, you know, that you came I can, through. I can talk to him. him. I wouldn't need to talk to you. I shouldn't talk to Mitchell. Basically. Most of the others you don't need to. Rogers, they don't want you to bother. Rogers right. said, don't bother. He's at the embassy and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, Hope Lewis thought it was... Uh, did he call? What did he say? Yes, he thought it was the greatest ever. He really did? Uh, yes. He I did. might return his call because he never, he never calls me. I mean, he never calls me to give me to bug me. Yeah, yeah. he never does. He what said, anyone he say, has though? to be convinced by that. Uh, he thought it was, uh, you had uh, an unbeatable position, the record was great, another 100,000 on top of what you've done, and he, he just thought it was marvelous. Good. Leonard Firestone called. Oh, did he? Len? Yes. He oh. was in Palm Springs, and he said that he was with a whole group of people. Well, they said. And they all were so thrilled. They thought it was just, uh, I'm reading from notes now, that it was great. <laughs> The record, the leadership, the the delivery, the 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 poise, the the everything of the delivery, and every and everyone around there just their consensus was that it was great. The conclusion, though, uh, tell me about the people in your office. They were moved by it. The, mm -hmm. the kids. Margie would call me, and Dwight called me. Dwight called me, and it was over. Dwight says I haven't ever cried before, and mm -hmm. Mars. Everybody, it, it was it was just beautiful. Well, I was practically crying when I delivered it. I, know I remember that. that I know that from watching you. And Senator Dole had just gotten to, Cal to Florida. Dole? Yeah. Yeah, and he, has, he said he has a nausea or cranking out, cranking out that statement that, you know, so forth. He thought it was it was uh, very good. Uh, he's gonna, he said he's going to put out a release in terms of the carping Democrats, and I said, what are you going to do about our own people? Yeah. He said we didn't we didn't limit to limit it to Democrats, That's right. but he just thought it was great. He's down there to do five fundraisers. Well, yeah, right. Now, out of all those people, I think the only one really would be Agno because I didn't speak with him. Well, I might call time. Rogers for only a reason that he suggested throwing away the text at the last. Yeah, well, he's a, if you want, I'll tell you up there where he is. Fine. He's all at right. the Luxembourg we, Embassy, we and I'll give him the vice president's number. Right. You think I should call Hope Lewis? I think that would be great because fine, right. as a matter of fact, so many calls I got cut off from home. Fine. All right. Fine. Okay. I'll tell the operator again for you. Fine. All, All three. Right. Fine. fine. Yes, please. Dr. Billy Graham, please. Thank you, Mr. President. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Reverend Billy Graham off the line, sir. Who? Reverend Billy Graham. Hello. 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 Mr. President? Who's this? Billy? This is Billy Graham. How are you? I want to tell you that that's by far the best anybody has done on Vietnam. And the, you had me and T 
tears. I really feel that. Uh, well, I was in tears myself, you know. Every time I think of that little Kevin and he saluted, it just broke me up. Well, that, I think you even threw old Dan Rathall's balance. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just tremendous. I just wanted to tell you that. Uh, that I, Are you in Knoxville? Well, no, I'm still in Vero Beach, Florida. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been down here about five weeks. When are you going to Crusade in Kentucky? Yes, that starts in about two weeks. Oh, yeah, I see. I have to go to California to deliver a couple of speeches first. All right. But you, th but, but you felt it was the right thing. Of course, we're fighting a very tough battle here. You know, everybody wants to pull out, but I have to fight against the tide. i got to do the right thing. I think you defused a lot of it tonight, though. I don't see how, what in the world they can say after the night. I think, uh, I think that uh, you've given some of uh, people like me, you've given me uh, something to hold on to and to really say. And uh, I've got an editorial in the New York Times on Friday, which I wrote this morning. They had it for you. Yesterday. Good. And I'm putting all the blame of this whole thing on Kennedy. That's right. He started the damn thing. Well, uh, he killed DM, well, and he sent the first 16,000 combat people there himself. Well, I'm saying that the first time I ever heard of our involvement was uh, four days before he was inaugurated, playing golf with him. He said, "We, I quote, we cannot allow Laos and South Vietnam to fall to the communists. And then I, I, was, I said, when President Johnson took over, we had 16,000 troops there. That's right. And I said, the political climate in the United States... Is well, and Diem had been murdered. See, you see, Billy, the key thing here was Kennedy's and... and I must say, our friend Lodge's agreement to the murder of DM. DM, that's what killed the whole, that opened the whole thing. The whole thing. And I said this sentence, I said, many of the present doves in the Senate were not then so dovish, even Senator Fulbright, who introduced the new, the now famous Tonkin Resolution. And I got all that in there, and they've, they've taken it. They're going to put yeah. it Friday morning. Good. Well, anyway, I appreciate it. But I thought it would. Yeah. Your sincerity and, and your manner of presentation was just excellent. Yeah. That, uh, it was just uh, wonderful. I, I was One thing, that. incidentally, I, you know, I threw away the text at the last and talked about this little boy that came there. That little Kevin, you know, when he saluted me, I damn near broke up. I'm sure you did. <laughs> but you know how it is. I'm sure it is. It's awful tough, isn't it? Well, God bless you. You've got a lot of people praying for you. And well, praying. believe me, Billy, it means an awful lot. And you keep the faith, huh? Uh, you bet you. Keep the faith. Yes, sir. Uh, Our folks, we're going to win. Hello. Hey, Mr. President, I have the Vice President for you. There you are. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. President. Hi, how are you? Fine, I'm in California. Yeah, I'm uh, that's great. California. I had a good interview with the Copley people with that. Good. Oh, they're great people. My God, they're, if we had only more papers like them, we'd be in Clover. That's just true. Well, Mr. President, I think you pulled all the teeth again tonight, and uh, I thought it was the... And I, I'm trying to be completely objective. I thought it was the most effective of all the Vietnam speeches by far, particularly the part where you uh, put the papers down and just went off the cuff on that uh, very personalized uh, impression. Well, actually, I was really speaking from the heart because, you know, uh, that deal where little Kevin, a four-year-old, saluted me. My God, okay. what do you do? You, you almost come apart. Well, it, it came through extremely well, not just that part, but the whole speech, I uh, thought it was extremely uh, well organized and uh, effective. Uh, it should do a great amount uh, of good as far as uh, defusing all of this incipient uh, well, demonstration and whatnot. Because basically, the problem is that the country is uh, sort of in a neurotic state. And no, I know. And so, but we got to fight it because we got to do the right thing. That's all. Well, because so, so history, history will look back and say, did we crumble or did we measure up? That's why I said at the last that generations in the future will look back and say we had the courage to do the right thing. I'm not sure we have, but by God, you and I are going to do, be damn sure we do everything we can, right? That came through strong and clear tonight. And uh, there, I think you'll find even the uh, analysis on CBS was fairly. I hope you didn't look at it. <laughs> oh, you did. I bet you did. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't look at those goddamn television programs. See whether they're just getting any religion. Ah, they won't get any religion. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate the fact you kicked those bastards in the butt. But uh, 
honestly, uh, I think this will, will be a tremendous assistance. And, uh, it wasn't too bad in CBS then, huh? No, it was an excellent. You know what they did? They say, uh, sir, we're not going to give the president to us because we'll pick our own. And they went all the way back to the first thing you said about 25,000 withdrawn. And, uh, yeah. And they said that you met or exceeded every one of your commitments. That's true. Well, for CBS, well, it's true, but I mean, for them to emphasize that right. uh, it was a new departure for CBS. And uh, it came across as a very positive analysis, the first one I've ever seen. Well, yeah. you'll get your hopes up. The next one will be negative. Now, I, I'm uh, as cynical as you are about that. That's right. Maybe more so. But, uh, well, no, 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 not more so. I've been through it more than you have. across extremely well, and uh, I think I think what you see that doing really tonight will prove itself in the coming weeks to be probably one of the. Well, you know, the real problem, Ted, is the fact that these goddamn senators and congressmen, they're all crawling and screaming and, and you know, whining around. Damn it, they ought to stand up and be men. The real question is, they want us to get out on uh, for a certain date. Why the hell won't they say so? All right. Well, they have a then, then, by God, all right, we'll get out on a certain date and let them be responsible for Vietnam going communist. All right, but they won't do that. Well, you see, they have a different perspective than you, Mr. President. They're not looking at, uh, at uh, the short term of service and doing the job. They're looking at a lifetime in the Senate. That's I, know, I know. Well, we're going to do the right thing, and we're doing the right thing. We're going to stick to it. But I I want you to be, tell old Bob Hope, but that I hope he noticed what I said about the Vietnam serviceman, because I did that for him. Tell him I, after my call with him on the telephone, that I wrote that whole section. You remember I said, by God, somebody's got to stand up and speak up for the men that have served in Vietnam. Very good. Wasn't that good? Yes, it did. Well, the whole speech was, was uh, outstanding. Well, well, but tell Bob that that section was a result of my conversation with him. Will you do that? Bob, uh, yes. Okay. Fine, Ted. Good night. Thank you for calling. Right. Yeah. Secretary of Rogers, Mr. President. Yeah. There you are. Hello, Bill. I understand you're having a gay evening at the Luxembourg Embassy. Yeah, young foreign minister is a hell of a nice fellow, and he's here in this country. Say, I just thought that was tremendous. God, that's got to be, that's got to have a great influence. I, I probably won't, Bill. You know, you you know, don't don't get your hopes up because no, I don't, the I don't country, like you know, when I saw Mel, you know, sitting there and whining and, and I, I, I couldn't care less about Jesus the Christ. Christ. That that had to be. A speech with tremendous impact. Well, you know, I put a lot of effort and, and frankly, as you know, a lot of emotion into it because I felt it very deeply. God, it was so and that damn kid, Kevin, you know, really, it's a funny thing I, I only tell you when he saluted me, I, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't make the next presentation. You know, a little kid, four years old, saluting. Yeah. Well, I tell you, it was. Uh, I, I don't know how you could have done it any better. I. I thought the substance was great, and I thought your delivery was absolute perfection. I don't know how the hell you could have done it better. Well, I was the, we we watched it. We had the whole crowd at, at, at the Luxembourg Embassy. Yeah, we had, Are you still there? Yeah, we yeah. had some congressmen yeah. there. Yeah, I, I made this date a long time. I wouldn't have done it, but I asked him. Oh, I know, I know. But the the whole thing was, uh, uh, I, you know, everybody in the room was was touched, including the the people from Luxembourg, the foreigners, and you know they have were they touched by it? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, uh, it was interesting that. Afterwards, everybody, uh, there was no, you know, everybody sort of sat, and, and you could tell that everybody was, was trying to touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I look at, I, I wouldn't say if I didn't, you know, I, I couldn't care less what the editorial writers are calling Screw them. The hell with that. Right. The American people that watch that have got to be tremendously impressed, and the impact, I think, is exactly what was needed. Just exactly what was needed. Well, you know, let me say this. If it doesn't work, what the hell? Let me. If the American people don't want to go to the show, let me say, if they don't, Bill, look, I'm prepared, isn't it? Nobody knows. We'll turn it right awful fast and forget it all. Yeah, but you can't. You can't do that. You're, you're, this was just great. I, uh, I had 450 top business leaders over the Department of State. I spoke to them from 5:30 to 6 and booked them by the beach. Uh, you had the copy by then, did you? Good. And, uh, Good. Well, I didn't, I didn't tell much. But you knew what it was. But, uh, actually, it was a pretty well written copy. You know, I, it okay. took me two weeks to write that damn thing. Good was good. But it was tight and, uh, delivery was excellent. And the last part, you know, so it was your suggestion. I told Bob Alden, tell you that you suggested, and then 
But then I had to find out something to say that was different, and that's where the little thing about Kevin came in. I remember that little boy. Good. I, I could, he really uh, shook me. He really shook me. That kid did. Yeah, I, I'm sure that some of these sophisticates will say it was corny. Oh, bullshit. Just like they said, the fun speech was a bull. If that, that speech, Mr. President, has got to have a hell of an impact. And as far as I'm concerned, I couldn't care less about Congress, what the goddamn resolutions are. Screw them. I, I, no, I'm serious now. I don't, I don't agree with Mel. I don't think it's going to be that kind of a problem. But Mel, Mel is so, I am so surprised. But of course, he's been taking a hell of a beating, Bill. Yeah. He's down there all the time. But, but if he's right, let's, let's fool, let's fold and fold our tents and go creeping away and slinking away like a bunch of goddamn cowards. But I'm not ready to do it. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. I, I'll tell you, uh, I'll bet you that that, Speech will just turn the table. I, I have no... The speech? You really think so? Absolutely. I, have, I really have no doubt about it. In my opinion, uh, we will not have any serious problem. Now, we'll have demonstrations and we'll have yes. speeches. Of, yeah. But I, I'll be perfectly happy to... to but the main thing, Bill, is the prisoner thing. They say prisoners versus withdrawal. That's going to be the next big issue. So we've got to find a damn ang angle on that. Well, well, I just, I just want to... So what I said about Kevin, I mean, his father... But God, he would never trade, you know, prisoners or some withdrawal, because what the hell? What does that do? That gives victory for the communists. I don't know how you could have said it better. I mean, the whole thing was... Yeah. You, uh, the delivery was perfect. Uh, I've never yeah. seen you deliver one better. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't hard. You know, I spent an hour with those goddamn leaders, you know. I, yeah. they're, they're nice, but uh, because Boggs wasn't there. But nevertheless, we, we had, I had Albert and, and Scott, who's, uh, and, and all the rest, and Quilt. And I spent an hour with them, and, and you know, I met with them, Bill, from 7 to 8 o'clock, and I had to rush over, take a shower, get ready, go over and go on. I don't know how the hell I did it. I did. Well, you can you can go to sleep, have a few drinks, go to sleep, knowing that it's a right. tremendous, tremendous right. speech. And how did Adele think? Is she there? She, she felt the same way. As I say, everybody in the room, uh, mm -hmm. Dave Abshire and his wife. How do you feel? Same way. He, he said it was tremendous. Good. Uh, well, that's good. I got it. I'm not saying it, you know. I know that. You wouldn't bullshit me. No, I know no, this is, uh, this yeah. was happening. Maybe because, and, and understand, Bill, if it isn't Christ, if this doesn't make it, the hell with it. That's right. Then we'll do something else. If this doesn't make it, the country doesn't deserve you. That's right. <laughs> well, it isn't, not me, but they don't deserve what they've that got it. for themselves. That's right. Okay, get back and enjoy the caviar. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Do my best to the ambassador. I sure will. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir, Mr. Haldeman. There you are. Hello. Hi. Hi, Bob. Yeah, I, you know, Rogers is really ecstatic. He called me. He called me. Good God. He well, really that's, I don't know. I, he, he sort of surprised me. He said, this is, he said, this is great as a fun speech. But I, it wasn't that, of course. It was, well, but it was a goddamn good speech. It, it was, it, it that, touched people. That thing is coming through all the way through that, that, and all of these things. I, uh, the calls, I don't, you've talked to him and did you talk to the vice president? Yeah, I talked to him and of course, Billy Graham and Graham. I talked to those three because I felt I should. Well, Henry was the first one to call you, and then the Attorney General, Hope Lewis, Dole. Well, I heard about all those. Rockefeller, yes, right, right. Right. Rockefeller called. Well, yeah. hell with him, but nevertheless, that's fine. Uh, we got a uh, report from Reagan, and uh, he, he made the point that although the factual, he said the factual material was very effective and effectively refuted the scare tactics of the other side, but the most moving portion was where he was obviously speaking from the heart. And uh, that you'll, of course, continue to speak out in favor of the policy. Johnny Rhodes says you set the record straight, laid to rest the false rumors. Don't think anyone who saw his speech could have any doubt as to his dedication to making Vietnamization work. Weicker, which is interesting, said he made a very, very effective presentation. In my statement to the press, I will emphasize the fact that the step withdrawal rate will go a long way to reducing American ground combat role by the end of this year. And that's he's found a way to... Yeah, go with his thing, you know. Yeah. Congressman Forsyth said uh, he's really staying with his plan. Wonderful. I had hoped he could have gone further, but I'm reaching for something where we're really going to be out sometime soon. I know he has the courage to stay on his course. The chart he showed was excellent. But a lot of comment on the chart. Uh, Cliff Hansen said the president, despite constant criticism from those political enemies who distort the facts, has held a true course in winding down American involvement in Indochina. Again, reported straightforwardly, kept it, keeps his promise but needs our support. Personal duty of every loyal American to refuse to allow criticism to go unchallenged. Senator Scott uh, says, I know he has a timetable and for obvious reasons he cannot tip his hand to the enemy, but the most important fact is we are getting out of the war. We are bringing our people home. We have cut the casualties significantly. President Eisenhower said he would end the Korean War, and he did it. 
President Nixon has said he would end our involvement in South Vietnam, and he is doing it. I urge all Americans to lend their support to his goal to end the war. Hear from any cabinet officers? Yeah. Uh, Which, besides Rogers. But, uh, as I told you, the uh, Attorney General yeah, but that would expect is, that. is waiting right. to call. And then uh, Romney, we took a message on. Uh, That's right, I don't need to call him. Said was was very clear and understandable that people are fed up with the war and those and they'll be disappointed the rate wasn't faster, but I personally agree with his policy and he will be down by next spring. Hodgson, the real emotional charge conveyed feeling of steadiness. The Eastern press will blast him, but it'll die out. He gave the impression that he was elected to bring steadiness and he'll not react to moods. And that, see, that's what's coming through. Raj, Raj Morton says, super. He will get a lot of flack, but he explained it so well that he'll shoot a hole in the congressional resolution for a 72 pullout. He was unusually relaxed and confident. He really got through to the people. His leadership came through. Blunt says, very clear and strong. You couldn't miss the point. The only ones who won't understand are the ones who don't want to understand. Bopey says, more calm, rational, and cool manner than he's ever done on Vietnam. He was so sincere. The Kevin Taylor ending was just the right touch. He nailed down very well why we won't give a pull-out date. And, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, he's got a lot of, uh, damn good. The, the union stuff is, is sensationally good. I caught. The, uh, back George Meany? No. I don't have Meany. Uh, Brennan? We don't check anybody. First, let me, wait a minute, let me. But who? What union people? people? Well, just a second, let me find them. Got him. Okay. Peter Faso, president of Labor's, I don't know which one it is, International. The whole country should stand behind the president. He's the best position to know what to do. Michael May, New York Firefighters. The president is doing the best anyone could possibly do. I don't think the president should get out too fast. We must not have sacrificed our people for nothing. And John Greiner, the government employees, yeah. president, tell the president he's with him all the way. Uh, Frank Rafferty, Painters International, doesn't think the withdrawal should be any faster, supports the president, will issue a statement in the morning. Support down the line. Jesse Callahan, President of Marine Engineers. President is doing exactly the right thing. He'll support him and get the word to everyone he can. Uh, Martel, 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 the President of Textile Workers says, excellent, outstanding, couldn't agree more. Martel calls him to follow up on these things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. got to follow up. C.L. Dennis, Railway Brotherhood, backs the President completely, will issue a statement and get to his members and ask for support. Pitt Simmons of the Teamsters, solidly with the President, will issue a statement of support. Good. Tom Boyle, chemical workers, uh, wants to wait till he reads the papers tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know, yeah. What about any other cabinet officers? That's all, that's all we got. The that's rest all of the sons of bitches are sitting around waiting. You haven't heard? What about Connolly? He would have called, I would think. No, don't have. That's right. Don't have any checks. They may have. The board is completely jammed, so they. Yeah, they, they may have called Rose. Some too. get through and some don't, and they may have gotten Rose. Yeah, that's right. I don't mind. I don't mind. I just wanted to know. I've got a bunch of the businessmen if you want any of those. Well, I, none, of, none of them are worth a shit. I don't know. Okay. Unless you think there's one that is. If you want to, tell me why. You really got to Mulcahy. He says, I watched with a group of 20 people. There wasn't a dry eye in the House. The greatest speech by a president of the United States. Absolutely superb. Never has a president spoken so beautifully and sincerely. Fantastic reaction from our entire group. Ranged from 17 That's to good. 70 in age. Good. Tell the president he has my life and my fortune. That's right. That's the best thing. To hell with the other businessmen. They won't do a goddamn thing either with their lives or their fortunes. Except, you know, screw somebody else. President Tuskegee thought it was very good. Mayor Patterson, New Jersey, said it was extremely well done. Use of charts, most effective. Most impressive aspect of all was President's sincerity. He has never seen the president come across better on a person-to-person -person basis. <laughs> well, it'll give the television people something to worry about. Robert Terrell, professor at Indiana. President obviously sincere, gave a moving presentation that was artfully worded and convincing. Listened with a group of friends who are not at all friendly to the administration, but they too were moved by the president's remarks, especially the last few minutes when he spoke extemporaneous. <laughs> okay. Well, that does it. I think that's pretty good. Uh, it's, in any event, uh, we shook him up a little. I don't know what we did with the people. Who knows? But you know, the most important thing is don't ever tell anybody about what Kelly did to the people. Let everybody think that this did it. If yeah. anything happens. I know. It may not. I don't yeah. know. We'll, we'll see. It, it probably will level off. I think it probably will level off at 52 or 3, and that's it. You got the conservatives. The Yaffs thought it was great. The Yaffs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ron, but they should. For Christ's sake, I was for everything they were for. If he's ever heard. And uh, the chairman of the American Conservative Union, Stan Evans, said, uh, Oh, he's good. This is my active support of most American conservatives. And, uh,
<laughs> you would have liked to see some discussion of the strategic atmosphere. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what Buchanan wants to write. He's going to give you strong editorial support. Buchanan yeah. thought it was magnificent. He was... Was he pleased? Very, uh, yeah. Ray Price said it was overall excellent, extremely powerful ending. Delivery very persuasive. Chart highly effective. Tone right. Presentation lucid. Delivery superb. Mm -hmm. Mark Good thought the off the cup remarks at the end were sensational. Good as no, but Carmen, absolutely first rate on all counts. Substance and delivery, particularly the last few minutes, outstanding. Yeah, that was Bosch's, so you suggested all that. Well, good. Dent made the same point. Buchanan said, magnificent and very moving. Yeah, good. They all love the last. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's the way the last took me about eight hours to write. Well, it was worth it. Okay. Fine, Bob. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, 
I'm not going to call him back. I didn't like his attitude today. I'm not going to call him back. No, that was a, That was a coward. Little... He waited too late. Yeah. That was not as strong. What do you think? What do you think of him there today? Oh, that was a, He was copying his best, and he was scared out of his mind. But he liked it, huh? I, very much. Mr. President, there was no way not to like it. It was the best delivered speech, and it was one of those speeches which it read all right, but it, it the way you delivered it was an absolute masterpiece. With that little conclusion, they'll all know who Kevin and Carl are, won't they? And that's how they're carrying it. Are they? Oh, oh are they? What do they say? UPI well, are leading with that. Yeah. I don't have the text in front of me. But oh, just Kevin, they'll go back and get their pictures, you know, and I hope the mother, God damn it, stands up and says, gee, don't don't just get out. I did reject that, you know. I don't know what she's going to say. Oh, she'll be all right. She's a wife of Marine. She will say that. She'll be very proud, I think, you know, that we're trying to do the right thing for her husband. That poor bastard, you know, you know what he did? I checked. He, he ran in and threw a grenade into a Marine, uh, into a goddamn machine gun, and saved about 30 Marines that were wounded. Now, goddamn, why don't we be proud of that instead of talking about this goddamn Cali? You know, it really burns me up. They, you know, we have no pride, do we, anymore, Henry? Nobody's got any pride anymore. They don't no, care about no that. No real patriotism. I'm glad I put in that. I think Haig was pleased, wasn't he, with what I defended that the armed services was he here or not? And Haig called General Bennett, the director of Army Intelligence, mm -hmm. who said uh, he was choked up and he had to leave the room because he had tears in his eyes. Good, good. Yeah. All right, Henry. Thank you. All right, Mr. President. Yes, please. Miss Woods, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Woods. Hi. Well, um, I just wanted to be sure that I, I, I did talk to Agnew, so I did that. Okay, now let me tell you a couple other people. Mm -hmm. Hold back my notes. But Hope Blues did not call, so I uh, said. Yes, he did, but you were eating. And he said you didn't have to call him. All he wanted was for you to know how great he thought it was. Well, yeah, he called back, but you were eating or something. They didn't want to bother you. Well, and I, I talked with him again, and, and he was he's just so thrilled by it all. He really is, huh? Yeah. The what thrilled, was what thrilled him? The conclusion, I suppose. And, pardon me? At the conclusion and at the whole thing. And Governor Rockefeller called. Called you? Yep. That's nice. And he said he just wanted to call up, having watched the program, he said it was tremendously able handling of a very, very difficult situation. That's nice. You had the courage to stick with your basic principles. These are tough times. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted you to know he thought it was absolutely splendid. Then he gave me his private number in New York. He said you didn't need to call him, but he gave me the number where he was calling from no, to, to, to say that you were great. I better call it. Okay, I'll give the operator the number. Fine. And you gotta return that. Yeah. Right. Then Jack Drown called and he was terribly cute. Oh, he waited 20 minutes on the line. Yeah. He thought it was marvelous, but everything was just, you know, really well, not, great. Well, he's a great friend. Oh, he is a good friend, you know. Um, he told me he saw Agnew today. Poor old Fred Schluter, but his heart called me. Yeah. He thought you were marvelous. Freeman Gosden called. What did he say? He said, I just uh, wish you would tell the president that that was the most sincere and effective talk that he's made in a long, long time. Huh. He said the, the it was the soft sell. Mm -hmm. uh, he thought that... I might he, call him back. He said, I frankly ended up with a tear in my eye. Yeah, I might call him back. He, he talked to a couple of people who felt the same way. Now, you know, I don't know whether you know, because I sign all the things. He's been ill. Oh. We've sent him a couple of letters, oh, and oh. tonight is one of the first nights he's out, and he's at Floyd Odlum's All right. for dinner. Put a call through to him. All right, I'll tell him. And I'll put a call through to Rockefeller. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. And uh, Jim Bassett called me. He's here in town. He was out at the Mazo. Oh, yeah. Have him come he... in and say hello tomorrow, will you? Okay. No, at tomorrow at noon, you know, in the, in the noon hour. I want to say hello to him because he's never been in the office when I've been there. Oh, he should hasn't be. Been anything like that. He did, he thought it was it was very good, and he thought that the comments afterwards were you know mm -hmm. he thought you really you know even with the people who would be hatchet type people he thought you did. I told you, have Jim come in. You know you know how we do it at noon. Yeah. 
and uh, and he used to come in because he's got he's never been in the president's office and I've been there and God damn it he deserves it because okay. he was with us in the top. You know the other thing he said he said he asked me to tell you that he felt that it was really great and that part of the charm and the greatness of the whole thing that it was not oversold in advance. No, I tried. He thinks this is terribly important. He wanted me to pass that on. So you were right. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't know we saw that. Thing. Okay. Well, now you don't need to talk with Hope, do you? Bob Hope. Uh, no, Hope Lewis. Oh yes, yes, I think. All right, I'll tell him. Damn, he's been, rock been so good, so good. And Freeman Gosden and Hope. Fine. Okay, thank you. All right, fine. All right. Bye. Ziggler. Ziggler, please. Okay. Hello, operator. Please. Did you get Mr. Rebozo from me? Yes, Mr. President. Dr. Kissinger? Yeah. Mr. President, Dr. Kissinger's calling you? Yeah. Fine, sir. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President? Yeah. I just talked to Alpha. Yeah. Joe or Joe, so, yeah. And he was just uh, he said the only reason he didn't call you is because he has a dinner party at his house. That's all right. Uh, I shouldn't talk to him tonight anyway. He, and he said he'd uh, write you a note tomorrow. He said it was marvelous immensely. You think I should call him at his house? He might like that. You should call him? You think I should or not? I wouldn't do it tonight. All right, I won't. All right. But he said it was marvelous, immensely brave. Uh, he, he liked the speech. He said it, it was proud to be an American. It was just the way things should be. He said he, you remind him of Grant saying you'd fight on this line if it takes all summer. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he said he was he had a lot of people there who what they think who were not sympathetic to you. He didn't mention their names, but oh, he I said know. Uh, yeah, it's everyone crap. was was enormously impressed. It was, were they really? That's what he said. His friends. Isn't that interesting? And he said, it's interesting that his people would think that, isn't it? Well, that's what I found. That's why I'm mentioning it. Mm -hmm. And he uh, really could not have been uh, more brave. He thought it was fine. Good. That's good to know that he feels that way. Marvelous. He said immensely brave. Exactly right. Well, the whole impression... He didn't think that the last was too uh, emotional, did he? Some um, may think no, that. No, no, he thought that was just... Uh, I did it, I thought, with... with. I really underplayed it a bit, but I thought I did it with, with just about the right amount of... You know, I felt it very deeply, but I couldn't let the people know that I felt as deeply as I did. You know, but I hope it got across. I just got a... Uh, somebody just handed me... Uh, a news sticker saying that which Bird and Scott are supporting you. Good, good. Bird is Bird is particularly important, and Bird is a fine person. Well, he, he he's important because he's a Democrat. Good, right, right. But but Alsop was was deeply moved. He said, and and all of his dinner guests were were profoundly impressed. Good, good deal. Fine, Henry. If you got anything else that's interesting, call me. Right, Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. Rubozo, sir. There you are. Hello, baby. Mr. President, how are you feeling? How are the common folks? Did you uh, see them? Well, you should feel real, real good. How do the folks feel? I mean, the people. I'll tell you, they're just great. They're middle just America. Great. Yeah. I think that, you know, I really think that that little summation was great and it's described uh, later. It was, sort of, it was not in the written speech, which I'm glad for. But that uh, story about that, uh, that Sergeant Taylor. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful, wonderful the little boy, Kevin. He was beautiful, so beautiful, yeah. beautiful. It's kind of nice. It was beautiful, and the use of you know when he when he uh, when he that little kid did that when I was at that ceremony. Oh. I, I broke up. I just couldn't couldn't go on to the next ceremony. Really. Beautiful. Yeah, but it came across, did it? Yes, sir. No question about it. I think that uh, it was all great, but I think that 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 highlighted that little human. Touch. Now tell Manoa he's here. You tell him what you think and. And see if you can know any Spanish words. And, and use those charts, too. That chart was great. Okay, here's Manila. <laughs> Time the truth now. Okay. Yeah, I won't be listening. All right. <laughs>
But, but you, but you felt it good about it, did you? Oh, Mr. President, I just think that the whole um, the whole presentation was uh, was good. There's, there's no way they could find anything wrong. I thought that your very casual reference to instant analysis was very well put. Yeah. And I think that the uh, the charting is always good. You know, it, it's yeah. just uh, I think it really it really uh, makes a difference. The fact that uh, that the chart shows that you've done more than you said you were going to do, and you know? the only the next step that I would suggest is that the deadline on ending the war would be a deadline on the Paris negotiations. Oh, I'm going to do that at about two at about two months. Yeah, that that was going to knock all right. those goddamn things. Exactly. If they don't if they don't talk, screw That's them. right. That's exactly right. Why waste everybody's time? Right. That's right. But I really, I really, really. Uh, you, you did it in a very concise manner. You put your finger on the whole thing. And there's no way, I, there's no way they can pick this apart. I don't see how people could not have been moved too by the reference to Kevin Taylor. You know, well, that little boy when he when he when he you know saluted. Good God, that, that was up. just beautiful. That really was just beautiful, and that I think is something that it was a beautiful way to 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 to, to wind it up. Yeah. Okay, boy. Very good. Go to, Thank you. For what, what are you going to do now? Well, I'm just taking it easy. Yeah. Taking it easy. I was talking to John earlier tonight. Yeah, all right. So they're having a good time. Yeah, all right. Fine. Yeah, well, don't do anything that I wouldn't do, and that means everything. Ah. Okay, bye. All right, so good night. Please. Mr. Sigler from me, Yes, sir. Yeah. If I had Mr. Sigler's in room, we'd be able to work. I thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Mr. Colson, please. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. Colson, sir. Ready? Hello. Hello, Mr. President. Hello, Chuck Howell. What is your soundings tonight? Well, we got the, we got a very, very enthusiastic response from uh, labor people in particular, Mr. President. I understand. Labor so, yeah. Is good, yeah. But it's, it's hard to put it in writing. It was just a feeling that you get on the telephone that people genuinely, genuinely moved. I think the ending of that speech was just tremendous. Uh, I think you, uh, well, we'll see. Oh, I can know all these people are, uh, you know, we, we had very few friends before this began, and now a few of them may come along, but what the hell. Well, I think you're going to start getting, uh, Mr. President, some of the, uh, some of that same coalition back. I think the uh, Raffetry is the is the rising star among the building trades. Uh, Who? Raffetry. Yeah. He's the uh, painters union. Oh yeah, he's a good man. Oh, he's a solid man, and he said only a goddamn fool would tell the enemy when he was getting out. He said, "What the devil do these people want? We're with the president, and just tell them we'll do anything for it." So that's, well, let's, let's see if some of them can't say that and see if Meany can't make a real strong statement. Brennan might make a good statement. That would be helpful, you know. Yes, sir. Well, they're going to be here in Washington, uh, the building trades, in another 10 days. So well, I'll try to get them to say it now, you know, tomorrow. Well, a number of them said they would. But Simmons, uh, the Teamsters, is putting oh, is he all right? Oh, he's, yeah, he's just solid. Good. But you, uh, I, you did it again, Mr. President. You, you, you caught that mood. Uh, I know that the... Some of the sophisticates in the media are going to say uh, that it was a uh, corny ending and bullshit. That's right. I agree. They exactly had it was, it was not corny. Of course not. It was very, very deliberate and honest and and true. Well, I, I, we we know what the okay. cynics will say, but you hit middle America right. Okay. Where you wanted to be hit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Hello. Yeah. Is going to return your call, sir?
and uh, the fact that you were carrying through was something you uh, firmly believed in. And I think the ending must have shook them a little because they didn't expect that. The ending with this person was great. Fantastic. So Helen Thomas, uh, Helen Thomas had missed part of the ending, so I had it replayed for her. And, and she, the, the reaction to that, the, you had every every person in the country, I'm sure, just uh, uh, you know on the edge of their seat, just in, in, in silence, because it was a very, very effective uh, well, moving well, thing. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, well I, I think just stand firm. Yes, sir. I think the reaction has to be good. I'm a goddamn edge. I think it has to be good. We defended the American serviceman, too. That was yes, a sir. passage. Right? Okay, boy. Very effective. Yes, sir. Hold on. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. President, I have Governor Rockefeller. Here you are. Hello. Mr. President. Hi, Nelson. How are you? Well, listen, aren't you nice to call back? I just wanted to call and say I thought you handled a difficult situation with tremendous uh, straightforwardness and skill. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate you. that. I think you're stuck with the thing, and I think it's going to work. Well, the main thing, Nelson, is how it all comes out, isn't it? That's right. And in the end, you know, it's going to come out all right if we can stick the course, because in the next two or three months, you know, between you and me, we're prob we might have a negotiation. Who knows? If we don't, if we don't, then we'll do something else. Well, I think that the use of that chart with those figures was tremendous. Did that come across? Yes, yeah. and then interestingly enough, afterwards, the commentary, I've forgotten what station we were looking at, but uh, they took your figures and uh, went by the periods, mm -hmm. you know, and said you cut 50,000 and you cut 100,000, whatever it was, and they accentuated it. And I think it was extremely powerful. Yeah. Because I thought it was into there. I thought it was important too, Nelson, to put it in very personal terms. So did the last about the little yeah. boy, the four-year-old, you know. By God, we got to get across, you know. That's what it's all about, you know. Not our generation, but their generation. And how the, are we going to let them down? That's really what it really is involved, you know. Well, and, uh, the tragedy is that so much of what said has now sort of become an Alice in Wonderland. They were I know. talking about something that has nothing to do with the realities in which we live. That's right. Well, let me say I've appreciated your. I know you're under horrible heat up there. You know you're. Well, I got my budget. I'm finished. Yeah, no, 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 no. I meant that in terms of this whole business, you know, your friend Lindsay and all the rest. But I've appreciated the fact you stood firm, and by God, uh, I won't forget it. Well, listen, you're the man who stood firm. Well, I had to, but you you didn't have to. You and you did, and I appreciate it. Yeah, nice to say. And you give my best to Happy and all of our good friends. Up I here. certainly will, and uh, we're just with you. All right, thank you. Okay, now. thanks, love. I have Miss Woods calling you, sir. Yeah. All right. All right. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Wanted to tell you a couple more things. One, Admiral Moore just called. He just has returned, you know, from Turkey for yeah. the last yeah. dental meeting, and he wanted me to tell you that he called to express his appreciation, and he felt that all the military people would appreciate what you did. What you really said about all the efforts over there, he, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I get to this one, I, I'm sorry, but he, he just thought it was so great, and he said, tell you, everything's going to be all right. Sure it he is. Said sure. He, he thinks that you struck just the right note. Good. Just the right good, note. Good, well, that's good. Then I had a call from Paul Keyes. Paul Keyes, oh, yeah, old Paul. And he said, Tell him that it was one of the best speeches he ever made. Every he thought it was marvelous. He thought that the calm, low voice was absolutely beautiful and necessary for people. That it was terribly important. That because of the way you spoke and the tone of your voice. As well as what you said, and he went on. He he, he could he almost repeated the speech. He could tell you, you know, yeah. what you said. But he said it was really the the low voice, the low tone of voice, and and he was he particularly liked the way you ended it. He also liked. Several of the other phrases. One of them was the one that uniting the nation, uniting our own nation. Right? But he he couldn't say enough about Good. the whole tone of what came over, the attitude, what came over the air. Good. He was, he was just thrilled. So uh, I, I wanted to, you know, I won't bother with any more calls. Yeah, you didn't, uh, 
You haven't heard from any cabinet officers, have you? Well, uh, yeah. Except I know. for Mitchell. And, Rogers uh, and Mitchell. That's all. I know. Uh, the rest that's all the cabinet officers. I know oh, they're all running away. Uh, I know. I know, but that's okay. Okay. Well, maybe not. Maybe a lot of them wouldn't, you know. Nah. Let's face it. A lot of them might not want to talk to me. <laughs> Most of them would. Ah. If big, they would. But no. They we got a lot of little guys, too, you know. That's right. Well, fine. I'm glad that Paul felt that way. Oh, he was so thrilled. And he just wanted you to know that for the whole country, and Admiral Moore was was great. Good. Good. And and your speech was, and what you did with that ending, <laughs> uh, you keep telling me that I'm hard-hearted or that I say everything's great, but it was absolutely beautiful. Well, actually, it was pretty good, actually, I had it because I did, was, it took me a lot of many hours to get that. I know it. that. And nobody knew I was going to do it either. No one knew you were going to do it, and I sat here I with tears every, streaming every, down every, my face. Now, I watched it with Louie. Oh, Louis. Oh, yeah. great. What do you think? And he wanted you to know that he thought it was one of the greatest speeches you've ever given. Wonderful. Good. He left. He stayed. He was here. I don't know. He was just in town and out. He stayed. You know, he never asked to talk. I know. He, but he liked Just it. tell him, because I started getting him. I said, look, I have to run. Just tell him it was a great, great speech. He stood up. He was He was just great. Good. Good. Well, Louis so, was... Louis is one of our few real good friends, ain't he? He is, because he never asks. There aren't many. Well, I know, but mm, there aren't many that are with us. Like that. Well. He was with us. <laughs> That's right. All through the tough times. Okay, hon. Okay. Bye. All right. Good night. Yeah. Mr. Haldeman returning your call. Thank you, Mark. Hello. Yeah. It occurred to me that, uh, you probably were already working on this, that, uh, you ought to uh, gin up our people to say, you know, we've had a great reaction, all that bullshit. Right. Have you done that? Yep. Good. I think we should, you know. Whatever the reaction is, you've got to play it that way, Bob. Well, we've got, we've got enough that, it'll, that that's believable. You know what I mean? We can... Right. And uh, I would... Uh, we've heard from only three cabinet officers, which I expected. And uh, that's that. I said, I guess we heard from Mitchell, who else? Rogers. <laughs> well, we have heard that. No, that's all. Rogers, Mitchell. Mitchell, Rogers, Hudson. Yeah, Hudson, yeah. Uh, you... Romney, Volpe. Volpe, yeah. Blunt. Yeah, we heard from Connolly, though. That's curious. Not, not uh, to my knowledge, no. Why don't you call him and ask him what he thought of it? Okay. I'd be curious. Fine. Right. I think it's important to know what he feels. We gotta keep him really on salvo. Okay. okay. Sure. Uh, okay. You want me to call you back then? If you would, yes. Right. But in the meantime, remember that the boys now have got to really gin up this thing. They gotta make it appear as if it's a hell of a damn success. You know, you know how it is. Uh, great reaction, all that sort of thing. Uh, who's, who's working on that, Bob? Is that, uh, the whole crew? No, but I mean in terms of how it gets out, you know. Well, you know, I know they're working on... Well, Ron's working the, the press. Right, but I meant in terms of... Uh, you see in the press in the morning there, but I, what's the reaction? Well, I say wires, calls, the, the usual crap, you know, that the, the switchboard is jammed, da, 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 you know? Right, yeah. What do you think? Do you think so? Yeah, well, we... That, or do you think so? I don't yes, know. we and, and we've covered that with, with uh, Ron to cover him with tonight. Because okay. the first story stuff is all, you know, moving now. Right, right. right. Okay, you better give Conway a call. All right. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Hobart Lewis, sir. Hello. President? How are you? I tried to get through to you a little earlier, but you had too many admirers. Oh, well. Say, I'd like to come down and shake your hand. Well, that's very nice of you. It's very terrific for you to hold the line that way, I think. That's wonderful. You had to do it. That's right. Of course. So. And the, the conclusion of that speech was the most moving thing I ever heard in my life. Well, it had to be done. I, I wrote that out myself about two nights ago, and really? I didn't tell anybody that it was going to be done. It wasn't in the text. I noticed you put the text aside. That's right. Just, just terrific. And it was true, too. Oh, it's yeah. exactly what happened. Well, when this little kid saluted me, I broke up, you know, I, and, and there was no press there at the I time. Would, I would think so. But it was, it 
was just the right time and place to tell that story. So I, I must say that uh, it, it, you were leading from strength there with 265,000 men out and another 100,000 to go and that terrific record. It's, uh, it's the most convincing story in the world. Yeah, well, and these, yeah, these yeah. people that are trying to know bug out without oh, regard to the cost, what the hell. But when you've got that terrific record behind you, you've got an awful lot of confidence. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'll keep the faith. Hey, Mr. President, we just got back from Keneal Bay, where we were in New York. You must have had a wonderful time. Isn't that a marvelous place? That's a great spot. Hope you didn't get uh, stuck by any of those uh, bugs that are out there. Well, there were a few up down there, yeah. Uh, And when we got back, we found a great big box full of uh, ashtrays and and matches and uh, wonderful glasses with your signature. You got the glasses? Oh, yeah, that's right. But we've been drinking your health. That's that's only for just our friends. Well, isn't that right? That's great. Okay, Hope. Thank you so much. Don't give up now. No you, sir. Yep, Dr. Kissinger. Hello. Mr. President. Yep. I thought you might like to hear a cable we just got from Bunker about half an hour ago. Yep. We have just heard the President's moving and courageous speech. It has inspired us all with a renewed sense of dedication and determination. Please say to him that all of us here are resolved to achieve the goals he has so eloquently stated. Please express to the President my admiration and respect for his great personal courage. That's nice. Warmest personal regard. Very nice. Very nice. Well, what the hell? Well, Mr. President... We hear nothing, you know, I haven't heard from McGregor or or from uh, Rumsfeld or Finch, any of our other fellows. I mean, they're all cowering, I suppose, waiting till they see how... Well, I think McGregor called Alderman and said he was disappointed at the withdrawal of... Uh, That's fine. Well, we've got to shake him up a little bit. But that he thought otherwise it was a well-delivered speed. Well, yeah. Good. Okay. But it was a great speech, Mr. President. Yeah, the hell with all the rest. Okay. I talked to Rockefeller. He was fine. Was he okay? Oh, hell, he's... He talked very nice. <laughs> well, you know, he's playing both sides. He no, feels... No, I don't think... He, he his does. own future is involved here, too. You know, what the hell? If I go down, he may go up, but he isn't... He no. never go up. No, he never says anything against you as far as I know. Mr. I know. Mr. President, okay. he may not say as much publicly right. as he right. should. Right. But he knows you're right. Yeah. That's right. So is Reagan, so is Johnson, and all the rest. But Reagan called in, you know. Did he? What did he say? He said it was outstanding, moving, uh, uh, the best reputation to all these softies or whatever mm-hmm. are left good for him. Good, good, good. Okay. Right, Mr. Thank you. Yes, please. Solomon, please. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Haldeman. There you are. Hello. Henry just told me that McGregor was disappointed in the speech because he didn't announce more withdrawals. Now, if he's going to be that kind of a guy, we got to sh- shuck him off goddamn fast. If he can't see this. Is that what he told you? Well, oh, what he told me was he, he was very enthusiastic on presentation and that, that he had hoped that we could, that we would withdraw, you know, a larger amount. But he said that all along. Yeah. But he really hasn't, has shown he doesn't have much guts. Well, you haven't heard from Rumsfeld, but you haven't heard from Finch, and this is all you heard from McGregor, so we've now found out who's who, haven't we? Right? Yeah, I don't know where Rumsfeld and Finch are tonight. That's all right. They'd call if they felt. I have heard from Ehrlichman, who was very enthusiastic, and it was interesting, because he especially liked the, the clothes, and, and he generally is one that's opposed to doing that kind of thing. I know. Well, Ehrlich might be all right because he's with us, but uh, I just, but, but Ehrlich, but, but, uh, seems to me, Bob, that, uh, McGregor, Van Schalderman, and they've been under great pressures, I know, but God damn it, if they don't send him now, I ain't going to talk to him. Screw him. I am not going to do it. They aren't going to come sucking around after they read the polls. You understand? Yeah. Or don't you agree? Yeah, I do. I do. But let's, let me see what the story is on him, you know, they, yeah. All right. All right. And Gregor actually should have stood up on this sort of thing. He should stand up and talk, talk up, talk it up, rather than screw around. And, Jesus Christ, we wish he'd announced a few more. Well, God damn it, he should say it. This is the right thing. I'm for it. That's what McGregor's job is. So that's what he is saying externally. He's trying to. He's playing it honest inside, though, and saying what he thinks. 
I know. And what he thinks is that we haven't done enough. And he understands why, though. He, he, he had hoped, not, not because he wants an out, but because he thinks it would do us more good, which, you know, with his... I understand, yeah. Area, it would. From stars you haven't heard from, right? Uh, I, I haven't, no. Well, nobody has, so he's playing his own little, little game. And he, may call, he may have called in. Check no, I've checked one. it around. No, Rose hasn't heard from him, and neither is uh, Kissinger, so he hasn't called. That's all right. Did you get a hold of Connolly yet? No, he was at the F Street Club or somewhere and had left, so he's going to call me as soon as he gets to his house. Fine. Let me know what he thinks. Right. Fine. Space Dr. Kissinger, please. Thank you. Hello. Mr. Kissinger. There you are. Henry. Mr. President. I don't know whether uh, you may have thought of this before Haig or somebody has, but somebody should get a hold of Mrs. Taylor. She'll, the press will be after her to be sure she stands firm. Absolutely. We'll now, do that. Who will do that? We'll, I'll do it. You call and call her and tell her that the president mentioned and uh, that uh, he was greatly moved by that. And you call me back, okay? Right. I'll be here for 15 minutes. Right. Fine. Bye. Governor Reagan, please. Right. Yeah. I have Mr. Freeman Gosden, sir. Oh, yeah. Here you are. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, Mr. President. Freeman, I understand you haven't been well. I just wanted to say that I naturally um, am wor and worried, but beyond that, I heard you called about the speech, and I just wanted to thank you for it. Well, I'm going to tell you about that very quickly. Because you're, you're, you know, you called me after the fun speech in 1952, and you were so great, and I just, what do you honestly think? Well, I'm going to tell you it was the most sincere job that you've ever done. Do you really think that? I really do. You were very sincere, and as I was just telling Floyd Adlam, Oh, yeah, you're there at his house, aren't you? Well, give them my best, will you? I certainly will. I was telling him that uh, uh, usually your greatest is when you're surrounded by 75 or 100 newspaper men. They're throwing curves at you, and you answer it. But I said tonight, for some reason, uh, it was the most effective, and you did it so softly and so nicely, and you, you delivered it. Uh, it was a reassurance of the whole damn thing. You think it got through? I want to tell you another thing, too. The end of that thing, I found myself truthfully, Mr. President, crying. Well, actually, as a matter of fact, Freeman, I want to tell you a little secret. You keep this between you and me. Right. When I presented this, you know, I presented 12 medals of honor to the next of kin, to a father, to a mother, right. and then to this, this, little, uh, this little woman, you know. And when that little boy saluted me, that four-year-old, I broke up. Uh, nobody saw it because there was no press there, and I couldn't really... It came over the night that way. I hope it, uh, it wasn't too uh, too emotional. Yeah. That nobody knew it, and nobody thought it was much. In, uh, somebody said, that was a very sweet thing he said at the end. Somebody else said, wasn't that a nice thing? And they didn't mind it, huh? No, and I, I just found a tear running down my cheek. That's all. Well, I'll tell you, but you, did a hell of a job. But you know, Freeman, the thing we've got to remember is that that's what this is all about. That it's what the president, President Eisenhower, used to always think of what I think of. God damn it. We just want to end this son of a bitching war in a way that, that our kids can have a chance to grow up in a world of peace. That is right. And if we bug out, hell, they're going to have war. That's right. right? And I, I saw the censure telegram this morning, but I said I better keep my nose out of it. I like an expression like, if you ever get to it, that not an American... A friend, a relative, a son, or anybody that you know that is American will fight on foreign soil if I can help it. That's right. And that's what you, if you just live, you did it so sweetly tonight, so I said, I don't see how you can kill that Lily, to tell you the truth. Well. You did a hell of a job. Well, you coming, know, coming, coming from pro like you, I appreciate it.
Incidentally, uh, if you got a minute? Sure, yeah. yeah. I, want. I thought that it was good that I met with the movie people and tried to say, by God, we're for you, kids, but we, you know, we're going to do the best we can. Yeah. They, they need to clean their own house, though. Huh? I was going to say that to you, but I didn't want to get in trouble with Task Driver or any of the boys. I know. But here's the thing. Uh, uh, they have got the, you say you want something, and you control this whole industry. Why don't you clean your own place That's and right. get these dirty pictures off? Get the dirty pictures off and also get the goddamn cost down so they can compete. That's right. And the unions are going to, no, I couldn't agree more. That's why when, when I when I went out to see Goldwyn, you know, I... I praised him for the fact that he didn't produce any dirty pictures. Of course, he would have if it had been in that period, but he didn't this, at least while we were there. Yeah, that's right. I tell you, the picture business is something else. When you get into that, I hope you got your eyes open what you're doing there. Because that is a real tricky... tricky I know it is. I know it is. Well, we'll before we do anything, we'll call you. <laughs> One of these days, I'll send you some... I've got a couple of ideas that might do a little bit. Good. 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 But in the meantime... By God, you keep your spirit up, boy. We're all with you, you know? Sir, you're sweet to call. All right. I'll tell you my hello for you. Bye. Goodbye. Senator Bird, please. Senator Bird of West Virginia, please. Yes, sir. Robert Bird. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Haldeman is asking for you, sir. Yeah. You are. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I got to John. The reason he hadn't called is he was at a dinner at the... Uh, F Street Club with all the right. former secretaries of the Treasury and the right. Federal Reserve, and that he was all right, huh? bunch of congressmen and everybody else. He said that that uh, he was in a large room, uh, about thirty people there at three tables, and they watched on a black and white TV. So you know he couldn't get any mm -hmm. view of the picture and all. He said that he thought it was absolutely superb. Pretty good. He said the content of the speech was absolutely excellent. He, said he really liked the use of the chart. He said that he felt. Uh, just on the chart thing, as a side thing, that that uh, it would have been even more effective if you had gotten, if you had gone to the chart and traced it with a finger. You know, I know, I know. Yeah. Pointed at yourself. I couldn't do that because I would lost the audio. Yeah, right. You like the prepared text uh, held in your hand much better than the use of the teleprompter, and he said you just stay with that. All right. He said it was a very, very excellent and moving speech, and he had. Uh, he named some of the people, John Schneider and Joe Fowler and Dave Kennedy and Moore yeah. and Johnny Burns and Frank Bowe and John Tower and, and yeah. uh, Mahon and, and McCracken and Barger, all things. Governor Robinson, Controller Camp, Volker, Democrats and Republicans and their wives. And he said the reaction in the whole room was just very, very excellent. Everybody applauded he like the end. Conclusion. He said it was very forceful and, I, and uh, he said... The closing at the end was just moving as hell. And he said, I'm an expert on closings. I'm not much good at anything else, but I know how to close a speech. And he said, that closing was moving as hell. Well, good. He was well, good then, did he? Yes, sir. And he, he was very, you know, he, he's so good at yeah. looking at all this. But right. he, he said it was very, very good reaction with the group. And he, he thought, you know, I asked if he uh, you know, felt, felt she had really made the made the point we were trying to make, and he said, absolutely, and there's no doubt about it. And so, I think he was very enthusiastic. You will have in mind my thoughts about McGregor and Rumsfeld sure. and uh, the rest, will you? Yes, sir. You understand, we've got to find out. This is our time, right? I'll do a little smoking first thing in the morning before they and, uh, pick up. I want to know, I mean, if they're, they're going to bug out now, Bob, they're going to bug out fast right now. Mm-hmm. We're not going to screw around, don't you agree? Sure. They don't want to. They don't want to fight when it's tough. Screw them. Because we're in a hell of a fight. Believe me. You're darn right. Hell of a fight. And if they can't go with this, this was, if I may say so, this is the best you can do with what we've got. I really think it was. I mean, we. I mean, I put a lot of into that. As I told you earlier, a lot into myself right. into that. Yeah. And if they can't get it. Um, that, I think the folks got it, but I don't know. Colson was saying that in talking with the union guys, he said, and he gave us, you know, some of the quotes and all, but he said that the feeling there was, that came through was really very impressive, a, a very enthusiastic kind of response. You know, it wasn't just they were saying, yeah, it was a fine speech. They were, they were cranked up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he was very excited. You know, as a result How about of that. the calls that make the editors and all the rest? Yeah, that comes so, up. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of those. That, uh, you, got, you want to give me a little rundown? Sure. Uh, O'Neill at the New York Daily News 
said that was the most effective job you've done yet. He didn't like the part about the big mess when you came into office because that was a political job, but the rest of it was faultless. It was a terrific presentation, very effective speaking without notes at the end. Martin Hayden uh, thought it was an excellent statistical story. And, uh, and the other point he made was that CBS did a good analytical job after the speech, which they did. CBS did a superb job of, of making mm -hmm. your withdrawal points. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Meyer at National Reviews was were impressed with the statement, courageous and absolutely necessary, adequately answered the critics, but retained the flexibility you'll need in the months ahead. Believes strongly the president deserves strong support. Clayton Kirkpatrick at the Chicago Tribune says to give the president high marks for courage and perseverance. He's taking a gamble and not uh, uh, bowing to pressure, but he laid it on the line as he always does. It was a very effective presentation, particularly in the last three or four minutes. Particularly noted his concern for POWs, thought it was tremendous how he wound up the speech illustrating the fact that this was a step toward peace. Jimmy Starman, it was good. He didn't give in to a definite date like even some Republicans want. Very positive, a little more emotional on the Medal of Honor bit, better without notes than he is with notes. <laughs> a lot more natural. Chart was good visual evidence. Carl uh, Reed at the uh, Sacramento Union said the best and most effective presentation he's made. It will really get through to the American people. It was honest and sincere. I was very impressed with his reference to the schools and other facilities we built in South Vietnam. Hmm. And uh, Kulak at San Diego Union said uh, the significant part was the almost overwhelming emotion in which the president said he wanted this country to end a difficult period on a note of hope. It was a very good thing. I think he will be criticized by his opponents for emotionalizing. I know that. I know that. Richard Pierce at the San Francisco Examiner, effective and responsible. He wished the president hadn't hoped it up at the end. He thought tugging at the heartstrings wasn't needed. On the whole, he considered the speech was excellent. He didn't like hooking it up, though. It'll get a little bad. You get a little, but not right. He's the only one. Yeah. But, well, I, any intellectual would. You know. Okay, but here's John Colburn at the Wichita Eagle. The last part of the speech was very moving. He showed an intimate relation to the people. His speech was too generalized at the beginning. He was, however, on solid ground most of the way. He's made himself believable on Vietnam. He liked the tone of the last part. He liked the comparison of the situation between now and 1969. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it goes either way. Mm -hmm. John Chancellor in the NBC commentary made the point of how the speech was surely moving at the end as the president spoke without notes. And... Uh, it was a good suggestion Bill Rogers made. Yeah, it really was. But preparing it was more difficult than he realized. Oh, sure, that's... that's. Uh, you had to say something that was sort of related to people, and it did relate a little to people, I think. If it didn't, the hell with them, the country can't be saved. Yeah. No, uh, let's... You got the point. Bill Brock was really enthusiastic. He's magnificent. He did a beautiful job. Shows guts and character. Mm -hmm. And Gordon Allen said the 100,000 troops by December is heartening. More than that, he was extremely impressed by the frankness of the president. <laughs> his flat statement that we would have the withdrawal completed is great. His complete sensitivity and confidence in himself is good. Integrity excellent. Doesn't matter what the demonstrators and critics say, it is a perfectly planned withdrawal. We are making progress, and that is what is so important. Good, good. Governor Davis of Vermont has been ill, but uh, feels much better after seeing the president's broadcast. He cannot see how the American people and even most of the president's critics can help but be convinced by his message tonight. He was especially impressed by the president's firm delivery and the last part of his talk that was without a text and so obviously heartfelt. Governor watched the whole speech with his wife with building enthusiasm, felt it was very logical and an excellent summary of the progress in Oprah Vietnam. Sure. And, uh, I see Bob Bird's on the wire here saying that uh, he has the very distinct impression that he means what he says when he talks about total withdrawal and the residual force idea seemed to be fading. I got that impression from the briefing. Mm -hmm. Norris Cotton told UPI immediately after the speech that for the first time he felt he could endorse a presidential declaration on Vietnam 100%. Good. Good. The president's unequivocal declaration for the first time stirred my confidence that we are finally disengaging from Vietnam, Cotton said. And George McGovern didn't like it. He said it hadn't changed anything. That's great. Didn't want him to say anything. Uh, well, I think, I think, uh, predictable. We'll see your polling tonight. Yeah, I don't have that, though. Mm -hmm. I'll have it first thing in the morning. Will you? Well, I have the 
our, you know, our own bow, our, where we use our own guys, the, the, uh, ORC bow, we, we won't, we're not doing it until tomorrow night. Oh, so we'll night. do it tomorrow okay. night. We we'll, won't have that till, uh, I understand. Sure. Till the next day. That's okay. But remember, look at the people on our staff now. Right. Uh, particularly, uh, Rumsfeld, Finch, except, well not Finch, Finch the hell, he, he's got to do it, you know, he's just got to go whatever, whatever we do, you know, that, but Rumsfeld's a different cup of tea, you know, we have to send him abroad and give him a goddamn trip unless he's going to be with us. Yeah. Did you agree? You sure. Okay. Well, fine. In the meantime, I think you really ought to, uh, if you can, zing up in the morning with Ziggler and his crowd, they... That you know, great reaction from the country. Right. Well, they're still there after we talked. I, I got them back. And, and what, but don't you think it's a good idea? I'm cranking on that tonight, too. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. The idea, it doesn't care what the reaction is. It'll probably be pretty good. I think we'll get a few wires. I'm sure we will. We, we, on that one, we've got to be careful because they check Western Union on them. But, or don't, 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 or don't do anything that we can, they can check. But, no. you know, if we've got them, we'll, we'll, we'll push with what we got. But we've got all this phone call reaction and we've got the, the, the word, the White House board has had a very heavy load, much heavier than we've had. Yeah, we'll play that. How is it? Why yeah, no. How does it go? Favorable? Oh, yeah. Mm hmm White House board is favorable. Oh, sure. It was, and on our poll, on the first, the first match on, you know, where we make the random calls, uh, that our own guys do was, was, uh, overwhelmingly favorable, much higher than, than, uh, you know, our, than we've been on, on the, others that we've done. Well, what the hell? Doesn't make any difference. So I say tomorrow, we just uh, live through the day, and uh, but uh, not going to be any none of these people that have been Johnny Come Lately's. <laughs> they ain't going to be welcome, you know. Well, watch them closely. All right, bye. Okay. Yeah. Robert Bird, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you for your good statement on the uh, the uh, speech tonight. That was very thoughtful of you, and I appreciate it. Uh, what was this, a wire news, uh, news release? Yeah, yeah, apparently uh, you made some statement that got on the wires. It said that you, I don't know, uh, were, you know, were pleased with the uh, fact that we were indicated that we were going to have a total withdrawal or something like that, yeah. Well, I had the uh, AP and UPN. And They're all happy, I know. You, you know, and it's an ABC. And in this position, Bob, you're really going to get a lot of, a lot of heat. And I know that, I know that you're under a lot, but I do appreciate the fact that you've been such a stand-up guy and, uh, you do, do whatever your heart tells you is right. But I, I can only tell you, I know what is right. Well, you know, I'm, and I, and I, I won't do it and, uh, I'll be held accountable, but, uh, we're going to pull this off, believe me. Well. I hope so. I don't know what was quoted, but I think in the overall, you would have been pleased with my... I know. Well, ...a reaction. I know. I appreciate it very much, Bob. I appreciate the invitation uh, to the briefing. Well, uh, look, we're glad to have you there, and we're going to... I'm going to find a way. The problem here is that we always want to have you and, and Bobby Griffin there. The difficulty is, uh, you know, the damn house. They, uh, you know, they, uh, they have a different relationship, you know, and... And if you get the whips there, then they say, oh, no, you've got to have uh, 18 other guys, you know, you know. Uh, but I, I'll find a way, believe me, because I want you and Bobby there every time I have a briefing. I'm going to I'll work it out. That's all right with you. Well, surely. They, they, they only have two elected whips, don't they, over there? One of them True. But the difficulty, Bob, is that they also have, for example, the fact the whip in the house is not as important as the whip in the Senate. You see my point? Yes. And therefore, they think that the whip in the house, if you have the whip in the house, that then uh, you're throwing off on guys that are, that are also ought to be there, you see? I, I am. And then I got to go down the line. Well, we'll find ways. We'll, sometimes we just meet privately. You Very know, well. If you and you and, uh, and Bobby Griffin, the two or three others. Very well. But we'll do it in confidence in you. And I appreciate the fact you spoke out so directly what you feel. That's well, what I want to know. Thank you. I'll try to be helpful. You betcha. Okay, boy. Thank you, Mr. President.
okay? Please. You get me Judge Thomas Murphy in uh, New York City. I think he's retired, uh, but uh, I don't know. He's a district judge, federal district judge. Yeah, my name yeah. was Thomas. Thomas. Thomas Murphy. Thomas Murphy. Thank you, yeah. Mr. President. <laughs> Hello. Mr. President, on that call to uh, yeah. Judge Murphy, I'm yeah. not getting an answer at his chambers, and he had an unpublished number, that's why it took so long, and they're not answering there. Can I yeah. keep after it this evening for you? I'll try it tomorrow. All right, fine. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Dr. Kessinger, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Call him, please. All right, I'm we're trying to locate Dr. Kissinger yeah. for you. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Yes, sir. Well, we got through with them soon, all right? <laughs> 9.30, that wasn't bad. Did you get out at 9.30? I left at 9.30, yeah. Good. And uh, I talked about 25, 30 minutes. You know, I, I think they I had to do that much so that they felt they came, got their money's worth, and then he yeah. put the bite on them because they didn't have anything else. But, uh, you know, I did something. I uh, Ogilvy was there, and Bill Scott and Percy. So I, I, I urged them all you know, to support them. But then I proceeded to talk a little about uh, the future, and uh, I mentioned the SST. I just thought I should, with Percy being here. Good. And I didn't believe it in mean way. I said, I understood that there are many honest men felt it was bad for the oncology, but I said, we must not retreat. Uh, we must not allow this to be a pattern where America recoils from exploring the unknown, from looking outward, and then we turn inward and become small. I really hit it hard. Do you think it was a good idea? I think that's great. He won't like it. But did you look at Percy at all when you were doing it? Oh, hell no. But boy, they all stood up and cheered like hell at the end. Did they? Oh, sure. Did they cheer that particular thing? No, no. They, they didn't. I didn't, let him, I didn't let him. I didn't say, I didn't quit on that. Yeah. But that was the general theme. But I just thought that, uh, you know, there's no reason to be so goddamn hypocritical there to let that crowd of my supporters, a lot of my supporters who are going to support Percy, although I completely... Uh, just to prove that he was running off the reservation every day. All right, and they don't. I also took national defense, and I said if America has got to maintain its defense unless we get an agreement with the Russians. And Max Fisher was sitting there, and I said, the Mideast, all trust for America's involved, for the Mideast, and all the rest. I hit that hard. Good. So Percy voted against ABM, and uh, might as well uh, see whether he shapes up a little. I think that's damn good. The uh, interesting thing was a couple of things. The... Uh, the, uh, I would say about almost all of them had heard that broadcast and were and were really quite surprised. They were really moved by it. These these, these businessmen, Good. they uh, they apparently <laughs> they thought it was uh, you know the it was uh, it was the last part of it too. They did they must say they, you know, put the cream on the, the frosting on the cake. So it shows you that even the hardened business guy is. Uh, uh, the business guy like that more than the uh, more than the press guy is slightly so, yeah, out much more. So we may have struck more of a chord than we realized, or at least struck a struck a pretty good chord. I mean, as your little poll indicated, that forty four percent very favorable is probably quite true. Yeah, yeah. Julie called and told me an interesting thing that Mrs. Eisenhower had called her to say when she liked it, and this tonight. And said that on the news tonight, one of the networks had Mrs. Taylor and Kevin. I'm not surprised. No reason that nice, and that they were. That, that's a that's an really a terrific follow up, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it gives an extra shot to the thing to the people. Who oh, sure, and that that adds that replays the, the whole emotional thing again, and uh, refers back to that. So that's great. We at least got that uh, moving in the right direction. When are you taking off tonight or tomorrow? No, 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 no. I'll be in tomorrow. I'm going to go tomorrow afternoon. Well, go as soon as you can. I mean, there's no reason. I'm not doing odds and ends tomorrow, you know, anyway. I'll, I'll be around all morning and leave around 4 o'clock when well, you have your great and birch meeting. Good, good. Okay. Very good. <laughs> yeah. We have Dr. Kissinger. On the line, sir. Hello, Henry. Mr. President. Are you out to dinner someplace? I was. I had dinner with the board of directors of the Rand Corporation. Oh, I raised a little help with them. Oh, fine. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. There. It probably shook them up a little, didn't well, it? Well, they had some uh, people, uh, you know, they had some bankers and Bill Hewitt, Packett's partner. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, uh, and Webster from the New England uh, 
Yeah. Electric. Head of Fluid Electric. <laughs> so, uh, I talked mostly about Vietnam. Mm hmm. And they were generally positive. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, we had a, this Illinois group tonight, but they, uh, they were, uh, they were about 40 business guys, and incidentally, Percy was there, as you know, and elderly. Oh, yeah. They were almost to a man had seen this and were really quite moved by the broadcast. They were. Well, that was the reaction of my group, too, tonight. They were, uh, and, uh, so it shows me that. And in my little talk, uh, I, I, Proceed to talk a little about SST and say, I understand why some oppose it, but I said, just not let this be a pattern of turning away from exploring the unknown, turning inward, not meeting our responsibilities in the world, and so forth and so on. I just thought it just couldn't do, let Percy sit there without the... Uh, no, I think that was important. Yeah. Another interesting little thing. Mrs. Eisenhower called and I, and she said that uh, the, uh, she was, of course, like, right, but she was told Julie that they had Mrs. Taylor and little Kevin on one of the news shows tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't, but somebody at the dinner told me. Uh huh. And that she mentioned that I had called to her. Yeah. Mm hmm. And how honored she had been by U.S. speech. That's what they told me. Yeah. Well, that, that's a, of course, the, the best kind of a follow up we could have on it. Better than having some senator or congressman praising it is to, Put that thing on to remind the people again of the, uh, you know, of the thing that they remember about it, you know. Exactly. And, uh, no, it's, uh. Well, I heard Eric Severide tonight at the tag end of the news. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And he said, well, the president squarely put it up to Congress. If they want to assume responsibility, they can have it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't think there would be many takers. He didn't, or, or I didn't. No, no, seven, I didn't think that too many takers in Congress. Hmm. Now, it shows the tremendous power of the presidency if it is used with courage and wisdom. Yeah, and sometimes, it, uh, particularly with the medium of television, where you can go directly to the people, not through the press, just whack it right out there. They, uh, it, uh, it'll, it'll give this press a little pause. That's right. Okay. So far, I think the treatment has been enormously respectful. Yeah. Well, they'll hack away now about the the time and do we have a date in mind and all that sort of thing. And I, I think we shouldn't answer that, Mr. President. I told Ziegler today that he should just, in the future, not give, say, look, the president is not going to. He stated his position. I'm not going to go beyond it, gentlemen. Exactly. Exactly. And any congressman or senator thinks that we got a date in mind, fine. But uh, we're not going to say because the point is, we may have a date in mind, but I have, but I'm keeping the option open of changing my mind in November. Exactly. That's the point. See, and that's what we keep the enemy. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. No, but I wouldn't, because if you say too much, or if we say too much about the date, the next thing is we're abandoning the prisoners. That's going to drive the wives right out of a war. Oh hell yes, absolutely, absolutely. But I think it is now very well positioned. But we just keep right where we are. Exactly. Don't, don't move. Don't. Uh, I'd, uh, I'm going to tell Ron in the morning not to take any more questions on it. And just say that uh, we've covered the situation and that uh, we've uh, stated a position and we're not going to talk anymore about it. We've made an announcement that runs on December 1st. And at that time, the president will have another announcement. Yeah, but he'll make it at that time, depending upon the circumstances then. And let him, let him, well, let it be at this rate. It'll depend on the circumstances then. Well, do we have a date in mind? That'll depend on the circumstances then. Exactly. And uh, that just, that's the way to play it. Play a little. Play a little well, I think, uh, uh, and all we have found that whatever we give, the doves will just go on to another position. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Every time, don't they? We, it, it, you know, it didn't really make any difference whether we'd, we could have gone to 90,000. It would have made, it wouldn't have made any difference. Much. Wouldn't have made any difference. As it turns out, uh, or we could have put it 100,000 in January. The same. Oh, it was a little better to have it. No, it was. Well, it showed progress. It showed progress, Mr. President. Yeah. But if we had gone up to 16,000, they uh -huh. still would have found fault with oh, it. Sure. It wouldn't have helped us a bit. Wouldn't have meant a bit. Not a bit. And uh, that's just not going to be the way it's being played on a play. We, uh, I must say, we've, uh, some way or other, you've got to get layered in. Sort of. Pipe 
down a little bit too about right. I I've scheduled a lunch with him next week. I'm going to get Laird quieted up. He just just say no. Look, look, Mel, it isn't going to do any good. And just say, uh, might say, look, there is a chance for negotiation here. Now let's don't spoil it now. Yeah. The only trouble is if he believes it, he'll try to hog it. But yeah. I'll get him quieted down by other methods. I'm just going to tell him he'll get himself into such unbelievable trouble. Yeah. Because I think he's taken up a bit. Do you? Yeah. Mel is basically not a bad fellow. He shouldn't. He should also pipe down on the Cali thing. We're yeah. we got that in the right position. We're we're not defending Cali, and we're going to let it run its course. And uh, the. Uh, and, uh, and if he turns out the way we expect to, he'll, uh, we'll just handle it that way. But uh, let's let, it, let it drag on a while. I think that's right. And I think the judicial process should now take its normal course there. That's right.